I have a deep-seated joy whenever I explore the mystical, brutalist architecture of Control's The Oldest House, a living, ever-shifting place that seems to span infinitely across multiple dimensions. The Oldest House is truly one of the best places conceived for a video game. Although stark, the utilisation of endless grey walls and miasma of various offices, industrial and government decor, unexpectedly sings a tune of pure beauty. Brutalist architecture, as its name denotes, concerns itself fundamentally with the pragmatic functionality and economic stringency above aesthetic considerations. Concrete, steel, and a zero lack of flair. Of course, brutalism has since connected with some artsy constructions nowadays. However, it's noteworthy that those buildings begin to deviate somewhat from brutalism's ideological purpose. In some parameters, brutalism was a necessity. Low-cost homes and the ever-expanding educational and government buildings needed something fast rather than elegant. What I love about the oldest house isn't just its brutalist design, but how that feeds into the overall trajectory of the game. While most modern video games is a pressure to create a place that looks used to increase the realism of the environment, here they wind up being a level rather than breaking down the boundaries. We've all been in a building that looks like the oldest house. We've all been in games where offices and buildings are the settings. Very rarely does a game come close to the level that Control offers. Too often these areas just wind up being useful or merely transient spaces to usher you into a combat sequence that's been eloquently executed. Ultimately disregarding the need for uselessness that Control actively uses to build its world. While Control is extravagant in its looks, with ray tracing, full motion video, it reflects brutalism more than it cares to admit. It's built for a function before anything else. World building. If the oldest house did not work, the whole game would begin to dematerialize into a malaise of nothingness. Not every location you travel through in Control serves a purpose other than to subtly reinforce the fact that this used to be an actual running workplace. While most big budget games will use this to fill in the world and with something for the player to take from it which is inherently plot driven or collectible or something along those lines, Remedy's method of world building is to just preserve the nature of a rather boring office that has been invaded by an outside force. You get it. You don't need it to elaborate every single time you wander off somewhere. Combat and exploration flow, even if you die multiple times and start to see the spawn locations, as the whole layout is never explicitly stated to be part of the sequence. Very rarely does Remedy rely on classic methods of design and usually uses those for more controlled, abstract set pieces like the maze or whenever you enter the astral plane. Control's world is more akin to Black Mesa in Half-Life or a Silent Hill game. Rather than ushering the player into a space for the sake of a gameplay set piece, it feels as if the areas were designed first and combat sequences placed later. Silent Hill 2, for instance, features a rather fleshed out town filled with nooks and crannies that don't particularly have an overall point to the game other than to ensure the player that this was and is a place. Half-Life's Black Mesa is an elaborate maze that only begins to lose semblance of reality once you get deep into the now broken down areas. Gargantuan building sites and an endless maze of grim areas filled with open plumbing and control rooms, even the most supernatural area of the game, the janitor Atti's vacationing spot, is just a sea of pillars that span out into something akin from an empty convention center. Because the oldest house takes on this look based on a reality that we all are familiar with, it only adds to the nature of psychological horror and mystery the game tries to embed within the player. Even the maze with its twisting walls and hyped up action might come off as a small break from the grey, but its use of recognisable imagery only sets up that feeling of like, I know this. Why is this building and all the entities connected to it just going along with the flow and keeping it in line with the rest of the Federal Bureau of Control's decision to fill it with classic style government offices? The Bruceless design doesn't help liven up the place but force you into a feeling of slight unease. The unease of looking upon a city in the night time, towering over everything and everyone. Concrete, steel, Areas of Manchester that are brimming with business look desolate, while New York prides itself on its ever-expanding collection of skyscrapers. But imagine, for a second, being trapped in something like the oldest house. 
Your brain begins to put the pieces together. It's seen some of this before, but something is wrong. It doesn't feel right. It might have murky blue carpets and the light musk of years of long work forgotten, but something doesn't feel right. Your brain knows it. You know it. You just don't know it.